you forever. But now he's just going to shower you with love. We got down there and everything that could go right went right. Everything. I, can, I wish I could tell you everything that happened on that trip. And it was amazing. It was miraculous. It was all God. And we got back home and he really thought he was going to beat it. But he had hep C, cirrhosis of the liver, and liver cancer. So he just really just drank himself to death. And, um, but I said, when they finally, when he finally registered to him, I am going to die. He said, all right, I'm going to get him to do whatever you want to. So I got online, I done every homeopathic thing I could do. And he ended up having nine months. And he did get saved. And I got to have a front row seat. And he come off that altar and hugged me and told me how much he loved me and thanked me for never giving up on him. And I, I, I saw God. And I would tell people, when you can't get out of your bed, to get, I mean, to go to the shower, I would end up, I'd end up laying on the floor for an hour in the bathroom just before I'd even get in the shower for months. And I say, he covers me. He carries me. He does everything for me. And I remember I went through the time when he was my father. And he everything a father could be to me because my daddy was in heaven. And then, he became, then it was that brother feeling. I felt like he was my brother. You know, it was like everything I ever needed him to be, he was that for me. But I just still was just so bound in depression that I begged to die. I had no desire to live. And God gave me this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 30, if, if anybody's got their Bible with them. I'm not sure if you do or not, but in Deuteronomy 30, and if you've battled depression, you'll understand what I'm, what I'm going to say. But in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse uh, 19 and 20, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. My family was like this when he left, and it rocked my children and my grandchildren. And it's it's been tough, and we have struggled but when it said that thou and thy children may live you know I hold on to that hope that everything's going to be all right and so I chose life there was a day that I said I can't keep dying I've got to choose life so a month after Mark died that's when I met Steve and he was crazy as I'll get out. And anybody that knows him knows that. He's crazy. And that's, I think that's why he loves the preachers good. Because anytime the preacher says something funny, I mean, it tickles him to death. It's like somebody has just given him $1,000. He eats it up. He loves it. And he told the preacher, son, he said, if you, if you to keep threatening, preacher keeps threatening to take a lap. <laughs> so Steve finally called on to that. So he finally told him, he said, Preacher, you take a lap, I'm going to take one with you. I was like, well, somebody will have to pick me up off the floor. <laughs> but, and the preacher looked at him and said, well, if I take one, you're going to have to pick me up off the floor. <laughs> but I was dying laughing. But anyway, God has just, he, he, Steve's got quick wit. And the quickest wit of anybody I know. He can make you laugh faster than anybody. And at that time in my life, I just didn't think I'd ever laugh again. And I remember the night that I came home from Mark's funeral. We'd had it up in Gastonia. And I, I, and it was dark and we lived out in the mountains. Light wasn't on, because he'd always kept light on for me, you know. Lights were, it was pitch black dark and there was a little step up to the 
patio. And I had everything, my overnight bag, my computer was like right here, thank the Lord. And I hit that thing with my foot and I landed like a tree. Busted my nose, thought I broke it. <laughs> Mouth was pouring blood and I laid out there on that patio mm -hmm. for I don't know how long and just cried. And I was like, here I am again. Here we go again. But God had, he hadn't quit on me. And, and I never, never thought for a moment he had forsaken me. Because he was my friend. And I knew his presence was there for me. And so, um, I just wanted to give you these verses. And I don't, am I, is it time for me to quit? It is, I ain't. Um, <laughs> John 10, 10 says the thief cometh to do three things. What does he come to do? Steal, kill, kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. And I watched him do that to my life and my family and my ministry. I watched him do that. And I think he just thought he had really got the last And then the Lord said, But I have come that Susan, you can again have life and have it more abundantly. And I know that I know that I know that God's will for me is to tell people that there is hope. When you're begging to die, when you think that's the sweet relief, when you think there's no reason to take another breath because Satan has stole everything that he, you feel like he can steal from you. Don't give up hope because he's, he started a work in you and he said he's going to complete that work. And everything that he allowed to touch my life, he he had a reason, and it's not my ways. It's not my plan. But his ways are so far above our ways. Mm -hmm. And if you can just hold on, mm -hmm. he will prove to you yeah. that it's going to be okay. But you got to quit listening to the voices. Yeah. Because there's some awful, awful voices. Mm -hmm. My daughter, and I'm going to be honest with you, thousand at least a thousand text emails letters i know i had letters stacked up golly it, it was high all across the world to me but my daughter would have to read them first because some for some reason there were women out there that felt like they needed to tell me what a failure i was or my husband would not have left I had books mailed to me on how I should have been a better wife. I mean, I got kicked. But I would say the majority by far was nothing but love across the country and even in mission on mission fields and you know that loved our music and loved us. And so you have to not listen to the voices. You've got to listen to the still small voice and he don't lie. <laughs> right. But the devil wants you to hear his lies. And you've got to be careful what you're listening to. And so, but he said that we, he came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. The only thing that stopped me from taking my life was my son, that I knew he needed me. So I never knew those years back when we adopted him that he was going to play such a pivotal role in this because I'm telling you, you can get so low. And I know preachers that's taken their life that I've been very close to, but I never thought I would reach that point. But you you just got to be careful. I'm telling you, the darkness can get very, very dark. But what I was going to say is, God, he, he gave me this verse about 
the millennial reign. <laughs> and this kept me from taking my life was Cody. And then when, do you realize the way that we're on this, that we're on this earth, I'm gonna close with this, but we're on this earth for a vapor life. Three score 10, whatever, you know, life is a few days full of trouble. This is a few days time. And how we live for him here is how we will reign with him in the millennial. And Eddie Davis taught me that and a, and, and, and a preacher named Johnny Jones in West Virginia. And I caught that. And I said, I guess it's that spunk of a Holbrook's in me. I want to reign with you. A thousand years is a long time. And I want to be one of those that reign with you. I want, I want to be that close to you, Lord, in the millennial. And if I do what the devil's wanting me to do, that's not going to be a good ending. And so I started focusing on the kingdom. Not this world, but on the kingdom. And he has given me. I'm a, I'm a person that beats myself up. I, I, you know, there's a verse that says, if you, don't, if you judge yourself, he won't judge you. I, don't, I kill myself. I judge myself so bad. But let me say this. I just want him to be pleased with me. And I don't want to hurt nobody. And so with that being said, all I want to do is just take the rest of these days with what he's taught me and I'm going to give you the in, in this morning the Lord showed me this in Colossians 3 you got to take off put off anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication and lying out of your life you got to put it off put it off get it away and then when you get all that off he says put on mercy kindness humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. And he says, charity is like the bond that puts all that together and keeps it on us. And just get filled with that. But like I said, I beat myself up because I know there's two sides to every pancake. <laughs> and I know my faults in the, in the marriage. I know that. But I took it on me and beat myself up over it. Until two, I know this is going to sound crazy because it's been be 11 years this year. Until two weeks ago, I was freed from that bondage of, of guilt. And David said, and I've been asking more about this for 10 years. When David committed adultery against, you know, with, with Bathsheba and killed Uriah, he prayed this prayer and he said, Against thee and thee only have sinned and done this great, you know, and I'm like, that is so messed up. You know, because I would say, He did that to me too, God, not just you. <laughs> Y'all talk to God like that. <laughs> and I'd say, Well, he did it to me too. And I pondered that thing for years and in anger. Didn't understand it. And two weeks ago, God said, Susan, you got to realize something. He did that to me. If he had loved me, he would not have done that to me. And you just had to enter, get this, into my suffering with me for what he did to me. And I was just like, oh, Lord. Every, every way I'd looked at it for 10 years just, like, just switched. So when people do you wrong and, just, and you feel like hurts you so bad or destroys your world, just remember, they did that to their God. And, and, it, and when we hurt from it, we're entering into the fellowship of his suffering. 
And that's a sweet place to be. <laughs> and so I just, I hope that I leave you tonight with hope. That's the biggest thing that I, that I want to leave you with. Because he said, let the peace of God rule in your hearts and be thankful. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Not, I'm not saying I'm thankful for what happened, but I'm thankful in it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. So in everything, give thanks, for it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I'm, I'm alive. Amen. I didn't take my life. Amen. I, I, my children still have their mom. Amen. My grandchildren can still see my mom. And Satan did not want that. He wanted to continue to destroy. So when when Brother Sammy says, Susan, would you like to come up and sing? He has no idea. That's like a shot in the arm for me. That I can sit at a piano and still sing for Jesus because Satan wanted to shut me up. And me never to be used again for his glory. And so I just want to thank y'all for listening to me. I'm long winded, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. But I have so much to be thankful for. <laughs> and God has done exceeding abundantly above all I could ask or think in my life. And I'm just thankful to be here. And I'm thankful for the oil that's being poured on us. You know, when we walk through those doors. And, and God is just, he's just so perfect. And he does all things well. Amen. Thank you.